What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and welcome to episode two of my quest for the perfect folding knife mini series. Uh, if you have not uh, uh, caught episode one, it was ergonomics. As you can see here, this is the order of the episode list. Today we're going to be talking about materials. I have created a playlist for this mini series. So um, as we go through here, uh, anybody who's watching this in the future and you want to watch things in order, uh, there's a playlist. Um, but uh, anyways, today we're going to be talking about what materials I look for when trying to select a folding knife for myself and what I look for ideally if I could essentially choose exactly the materials that I want for the perfect folding knife. Um, now, there are a lot of materials as far as, you know, the handle scales go. There's common stuff like G10. You know, we all know about G10. Uh, we've got stuff like plastic or acrylic or whatever you want to call that um, on the that's the cold steel tough light and the Ontario rat model one um, wood is a common material uh, found on knives uh, that's the open old, I think number eight um, carbon fiber definitely something that people like aluminum uh, micarta uh, these are all examples of um, preferable materials. Um, weird stuff sometimes like copper. Um, and then a lot of people's favorite, um, titanium. Titanium is definitely a popular handle material these days. So I would say these are some of the most common handle materials. You know, there's definitely some other weird stuff out here. But this is, this is stuff that you see a lot. And uh, let me get these a uh, couple of these titanium knives up here and let's get the shaman in there just because. So when I think about the materials that I want for my knife, um, you know, there's there are a lot of things that come into play. Um, the reason that steel is not up here is because steel is just too heavy and it corrodes. Um, so weight is not the biggest deal to me, you know, I've said this many times and I've thrown kind of random numbers out there, but truthfully, I prefer knives between 4.5 ounces and about 6.5 ounces because I like heft. Now within there, I like structural integrity and you know, the, the feeling of strength and actual strength. Um, but I also don't like the idea of any of my handle materials, um, reacting to, uh, temperature or moisture or chemicals. Um, and so, you know, synthetic materials like G10 and plastic are, are nice. Um, you know, wood, uh, that's going to be out right away for me because wood expands and contracts, um, you know, in heat and cold and moisture. Not saying that the open is a bad knife. I'm saying just for me, this is what I'm looking for. Keep in mind, guys, this is not me telling you what is def definitely good and bad. This is me telling you how... I try to try and select knives and what I think of materials. Um, you don't have to think exactly like me. Uh, more so, it's this is all designed to kind of give you an example of a process, all the different steps to a process or a ritual that I go through before I select a new knife. Um, but anyways, um, you know, micarta is also a great material, but I don't particularly like how micarta absorbs moisture and hand oils and sort of changes. I don't think that it affects the strength of micarta um, or the integrity of it, um, but it's it, for that reason, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, copper is awesome. Looks great. It takes a patina um, and it looks, it just looks better with age. The problem with it though is it's just too heavy. Now I love my Manix 2 in copper and I'll continue to use it, but I'll be the first to admit it's not ideal. Um, aluminum is great. Uh, this particular grade of aluminum on the, um, uh, on the uh, Microtech SOCOM Elite is the 7075 T6, which is actually a step up in terms of strength from the industry standard of 6061 T6. I've heard there's actually versions of the Microtech SOCOM Elite made in both. This one is definitely the 7075. Uh, aluminum's great. It doesn't quite give me the feeling of heft that I want. It's so light that I actually lose some of that feeling of heft, and that's a personal thing. Do I think that aluminum is plenty durable for tasks that you would ask of a folding knife? Yes, absolutely. Um, it just doesn't quite do it for me. Now, on that note, uh, plastic, it's the same thing. Plastic just feels cheap. Makes for a great 
beater knife, a great user knife. It's going to resist heat and cold and chemicals and moisture and blah, blah, blah. It just feels cheap. So it's not something I'm interested in based on just that. So what we're left with here are, in my opinion, the best materials or at least my preference in materials for a uh, folding knife handle, G10, carbon fiber, and titanium. Now, I love carbon fiber, and it's strong. Um, it's very pretty. Um, I feel like it's, it's, it's probably very close to G10 in terms of, you know, how much strength it has and how, mu how far it will flex before it actually starts to, it, it won't really break if it's like G10, it'll, it'll unweave itself, you know, it'll, you can, uh, uh, if you keep bending it or, and, and keep pushing, eventually it'll probably, I don't know, I've never actually tried this, I would imagine it sort of changes colors or gets lighter and starts to unweave itself, that's what happens with G10. I love carbon fiber, but, you know, if it comes down to it, I'm not, I, I wouldn't say that carbon fiber is my favorite looking material. It, I, I love it, but I, I like, um, I like the, the, um, the fact that G10 is less expensive and can structurally, uh, in terms of structural integrity, can do the same thing as carbon fiber. I like that more than I like the look of carbon fiber. And the fact that carbon fiber is more expensive kind of kills carbon fiber for me. Um, so that's out of there. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, now, wait a second. You could argue, because what I've got left here are G10 and titanium. You could argue that the benefits of titanium in terms of structural integrity um, don't, uh, don't um, you know, counterbalance in terms of what it costs over G10. You could make the same argument. Yes, you could. You could. But here's where titanium uh, does it for me. Titanium looks nice and it feels nice and it's just heavy enough to give me that feeling of solidity when it's solid. The XM18 three and a half inch here with the full tie scale, you know, um, that, uh, that's a great example of a knife that feels very solid and I get a lot of enjoyment out of because it feels solid. Um, now, you know, the other benefit of titanium to a lot of you, it's not one that uh, is going to is gonna sway my decision here, but a lot of what's nice about titanium is um, it can be, you know, you, you get to keep a lot of its strength, um, but you can have massive weight reduction. The, uh, for example, the, the line steel TRE here weighs like two and a half ounces or something like that. The inside of it is um, heavily, heavily milled out. I wonder if we can get in there. Yeah, you can see those big pockets in there. Uh, very milled out. And that's a benefit to titanium, but it's very expensive. Um, G10, um, it, it comes in a multitude of colors. Um, G10 can be easily can be contoured and smoothed out, um, or it can be heavily textured, you know, and add, uh, add for grip. Um, same with titanium, you know, that was another example I wanted to use on the XM18. Titanium, uh, in that case, is, is textured and uh, offers, does offer a little bit of grip. I would say G10 has the potential to be more grippy. It's, it's obviously less expensive. It's, uh, it's multiple layers of cooked and baked or cooked and compressed fiberglass. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it, it can be sculpted into, you know, whatever shape. I think originally, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I think NASA used G10 as an insulator for computer parts. That's what I heard. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but very strong, very lightweight, comes in a variety of different colors, um, and is inexpensive. So, you know, it's, it's hard to select between these two. Oftentimes, I find myself loving a combination of G10 and titanium, like some, some nice titanium liners uh, with G10 on, on top that's maybe, you know, or maybe titanium with a G10 inlay that's got a uh, different color. You know, I like that because I'm, I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything for strength. You know, basically, uh, titanium is, is, has the potential to be stronger. Um, and, uh, but, but it costs more, you know, um, and, uh, titanium is not going to corrode. Well, I mean, technically I think there is a point where titanium can form some type of corrosion, but it's not, not, not likely to form, um, uh, just with general use of a folding knife. Now, truthfully though, if I'm going to pick, yeah, you know, if it were my ideal folding knife would have textured or smooth titanium, I think textured would be 
the way for me to go. I do love the feeling of smooth titanium, though. This is um, the Damned Designs uh, Pound. It's a double knuck, but I'm using it as an example of smooth titanium. I just love how smooth titanium looks. I also like that it um, you know, can be tumbled or it can be anodized different colors. It's something that we didn't talk about. G10 can be dyed, dyed different colors. A lot like a lot of the materials that I show. You know, plastic obviously comes in a lot of different colors. Aluminum comes in a lot of different colors. Micarta does. Wood has lighter and darker versions of itself. Even carbon fiber has different colors of it. Copper is pretty much always copper. You know, just going back over everything I talked about, but Titanium can be anodized in different colors, and the anodization oftentimes on titanium is pretty durable. A downside is, though, it, it does eventually wear off. Um, for me, that's okay because I actually prefer stonewashed or polished or satin finished uh, titanium. You know, I, I just really like it. Titanium to me feels nice to the touch. It looks nice. It, it you know, you say titanium to somebody, and it just has that sound of premium. Um, and I like that, you know, especially on this Hinder XM18, I love this titanium scale. I don't know if I've ever given you guys a, a, a crazy close-up of this scale, but I love this. The feel of it is, oh man, I mean, it, this it's getting weird. I, I know, I'm sorry, it's getting weird. But um, yeah, the feel of this textured titanium scale is awesome. I love um, the solidity here, and I love that my fingers are actually gaining uh, some traction on that. So G10 is great. G10 is definitely great, but um, I, I think I would prefer uh, textured titanium. Now, the benefit, of course, uh, with, uh, with textured titanium is grit, but I would say on the reverse side of the knife, I would prefer that it be smooth so that I can easily slip the pocket clip over my pants and it doesn't have to fight the texture pattern to get over there. Um, so as far as my handle materials go, it's pretty much, for me, it's going to be textured titanium. Um, and I know full well that that will add to the cost of the knife. Now, for steel, I just went over, I did that video on my top five favorite steels of all time. So um, truthfully, you know, I would say any of my top three, I would really, really, well, any of my top five, I'd really love, as you know, aside from, from D2, D2 is one of my top five favorite steels, but it's just, if I'm imagining this amazing, like glorious Excalibur, um, of, of a folding knife. And, and yes, that's a play into the, uh, thumbnail. Uh, that's, that's, that's supposed to be Excalibur still stuck in the rock. Um, that's kind of the way I think of this is like being able to pull the sword from the stone and it being this perfect match for me. Um, but uh, if I'm picturing my Excalibur, it, it does it does not include D2 steel. D2 is great, but it just doesn't D2 doesn't have that feeling, you know, that X factor. That that's what we're going to talk about in the final episode. The X factor it doesn't have that. You know, CTX HP is really uh, CTS X HP. Sorry, is really close, um, but uh, it's it's not quite there for me either. Um, and uh, though my number one favorite user steel is. 154 cm slash cpm 154 it ironically also i say ironically because it's my number one favorite user still it ironically doesn't have enough of that x factor or that feeling of premium to me where i can envision it on my excalibur you know um i think i'm officially going to start calling my my ideal like you know my hypothetical or my dream knife i'm going to start calling it excalibur um but uh, I don't picture that. You know, truthfully though, I do picture 20CV slash 204P slash M390 and or CPM S35VN. I love those steels so much, not just for, you know, their properties and, and how uh, amazing they are. Three of the uh, four knives up here are M390, the Hogue Ritter RSK uh, MK1 G2, the Line Steel TRE, and this XM18 3.5 inch. They're all M390. Poor Shaman sitting over here with S30V, which is also a great steel, just doesn't do it for me. Um, but uh, let's get some S35VN out here, actually. Um, S35VN and M390, um, they they do do it for me. You know, uh, the benefit of S35VN being um, added toughness over M390, pretty good uh, corrosion resistance. In fact, it's got really good corrosion resistance and pretty darn good edge retention. Um, you know, it's, it's a nice, tough stainless steel and it makes an incredible user. Now M390 has amazing edge retention and amazing corrosion resistance. And, uh, those are generally the properties that people love about M390 where it lacks in toughness though. 
Um, that's, that's, you know, it can be a problem. It oftentimes isn't in the EDC world because like I've said many times, 99% of us are just carrying pretty knives in our pockets and opening letters and boxes and that's pretty much it. I know there are people out there who really hard use their knives, but, um, you know, for me, S35VN is a good choice because if I did, I, I did want to go out and use it really, really hard, um, I wouldn't be as afraid to use it versus M390 because I know that I can resharpen S35VN. M390, I've been kind of successful sometimes and other times I have completely failed. And I know that all depends on heat treat and stuff like that, but S35VN has always treated me really well. And while I don't quite feel the exact same, you know, internal feeling, that internal X factor, like, oh, wow, it's amazing. I don't have quite the same feeling there as I do for M390 and 20CV. Every time I see M390 or 20CV printed on a blade, I'm like, oh, wow, that's the good stuff, you know? But as far as my own personal experience with steels go, the benefits of S35VN in utility actually outweigh my appreciation in X Factor for M390. So if I had to choose a blade steel, a perfect blade steel for me, all things considered, uh, the feeling that I get from it, you know, its composition and how easy it is to resharpen and the benefit that I get from using it. Honestly, I would have to pick S35VN. Now, it only slightly beats M390. If if, uh, if if a genie was able to conjure me a perfect folding knife right now, and it had it had everything I wanted, but it had M390 instead of S35VN, I'd be like, hey, I'll take it. No problem. You know, I'm, I'm saying S35 is beating M390 in my head by 1% just because it's a little bit easier to sharpen. And I don't feel quite as bad about the possibility of putting a nick or a roll in S35VN. And I'm sure a lot of you can echo that 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 feeling. You know, a lot of you have used S, um, M390, put a chip in it, tried to resharpen it back out and just thought, oh, it sucks. You know, S35VN, it's not the same way. In fact, S35VN was meant as a direct evolution of S30V because it's easier to machine and it has so, it's so close to the same you know composition of S30V and you still gain most of the benefit in terms of edge retention and corrosion resistance. It's just easier to machine. It's easier to sharpen. So manufacturers move to that. It's the short explanation of it anyway. You can look up the complete history on blade forms. It's pretty interesting. But that's truthfully my my thoughts on that. No exotic you know, stuff, I don't need silver twill or lightning strike carbon fiber or, or whatever else there is out there now. I'm sure that's old news, but um, good old fashioned S35VN and textured titanium in a tumbled finish. Honestly, those are ideal for me. I gain the benefits of uh, durability, the premium feel I want, the premium look that I want, uh, resistance to corrosion all the way around the knife. Um, no expansion and contraction from heat. Yes, um, heat and cold do affect it in terms of the surface temperature of it. Um, but I like to think that I would be wearing gloves in the worst of circumstances. So um, to me, those are ideal materials. And those are the materials that I would look for. Um, so, and you know, I show the hinder a lot, but, but it's because it's the best example I have out here of the texturing that I like. Um, it's, it's enough to, to add traction, um, versus an otherwise, you know, a, a much more smooth surface. This has some machining in it, but it's a, it's a lot smoother here, especially this right here. This is a very smooth surface. I can see it slipping out of my hands, but not so much the titanium. Obviously the jimping helps, you know, the ergonomics help, but I like that surface texturing and truthfully it's probably more so just nice to look at you know it, it it reflects light in so many different angles it's just it's really nice to look at and that's that's truthfully what i enjoy um about titanium it just looks nice it feels nice you know i'm probably getting to a point where i'm just rambling now but um that's uh, this this episode's running long versus my original goal of only 10 to 15 minutes so i'm sorry about that but uh, anyways, that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. Um, uh, like I said last time, I'm going to do um, one of these episodes every Sunday. So this is going to be a Sunday thing until we finish all six episodes. So um, if you are enjoying this series so far, then um, you know tune in next week on Sunday afternoon for episode three, which is going to be Blade Shape. 
Um, so that'll be an interesting one. I have a lot to say there. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. Um, if you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there is definitely more coming. Thanks for watching and have a great day.